It's the National Football League on EA Sports. And if it's in the game, it's in the game. It's the 49ers and the Bears. And it's all just ahead on Madden NFL 24. Soldier Field opened back in 1924 with the Bears becoming tenants in 71. And what a home field advantage it has become here in Chicago. Today, what a matchup. Two NFL franchises with so much history, so much tradition, getting set to do battle here. As it'll be the San Francisco 49ers taking on the Chicago Bears. From up top next to Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gauden. And folks, we were already excited for this game. And then before the contest, you and I are down in the field outside the white line. Yes, we were following the rules. We were following the rules. And a ball comes over our direction, but we can't see it. Somebody yells heads up. And instinctively, you turn around and you snare it one-handed with your off left hand. So now we're really ready for football. No gloves either. No gloves. No gloves. Not like what the guys are wearing playing the game now. But wasn't that a whole lot better than that time we were down there? And I got the coffee spilled on me when I got nailed by the punt returner. That happened to the Vikings, right? Yeah, it's a much better job of being heads up this time. Thank you for the thank you for the notice. Here's the punter Trenton Gill now to do the honors, and off we go here at Soldier Field. Start this drive just across the 30. Pretty nice work on the return. So here's the first drive now for the 49ers. And they will be led out by their second year quarterback. And you'd think as a young QB, there'd be some nerves leading an offense out to start a game, but haven't seen any sign of them right now. And speaking with him earlier this week, sense that the pressure wouldn't get to him. He feels comfortable being the face of this offense and shouldering the expectations on game day, even if he doesn't quite have the years of experience other quarterbacks do. Line of scrimmage, the 31 now on first and 10. They start on the ground with McCaffrey. Five yards on the game's first play, second down. Nice satisfying run on first down for the offense, picking up five, which means defensively, the thought process is entirely different. You don't want to panic, but at the same time, you're saying to each other, we've got to tighten this down. We can't give up gains like that. Here's a second and five. They stay on the ground, McCaffrey again. And they will only muster a yard here to the 38. But not much on that run, Charles. No, that's exactly the way to execute a run blitz there. They guessed correctly that they would move the ball on the ground, honed in on it, and stopped them. Mark that down for a win in the defense's column. And they'll look to avoid an early three and out here on third and four. Purdy now to throw. Work in the middle of the field, and he's got a man complete. And he is going to have the 49ers first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. I don't care how many times we see it, I still get a kick out of watching quarterbacks and receivers do the pass tree in pregame warm-up. But I always remember that when we go to practices, we see that after practices as well. They really tune it up, don't they? They tune it up. They know why they do it for these situations. First down. And they build that trust, and that's why they're able to find him in this type of a situation. So the completion good for six yards, and that's going to bring up second down. It's a pickup of six. Brings up second and four at the Bears' 37-yard line. Now a give right side McCaffrey. And this won't be enough to pick up the first. A gain of two, third and one. Here now, third and a yard. Now Purdy. And that will be incomplete. Brings up fourth down. Solid coverage by the Bears D. Man coverage is certainly a staple of their defense. It's built for plays like that. 
forcing that incompletion. So Purdy off and Moody on for the 49er field goal. It'll be spotted on the right hash, a 52-yard attempt. And his kick is good. And the 49ers take a 3-0 lead. They were probably hoping to get him a little bit closer for a shorter field goal, but he was able to get it done from deep. Nice little tester for him to begin things, huh? I think he was hoping for a little bit more of a chip shot. Instead, they made him stretch it out a little bit, but he's got to feel great now that he put it through the pipes. So after the main field goal by Moody, he's back out to kick this one away. On the return, here's Tyler Scott. And he had no room to run as he's tackled down inside the 20. So here are the Bears now for their opening drive. They'll be led out by a first-round pick back in 2021 from Ohio State. It's Justin Fields. Coming out of Ohio State, one of the top prospects in the NFL draft, and it was so big that they moved up in the draft to get him, to make sure that they had him. And, boys, he got the full package. Loves the game. Big-time arm. 4-4 speed. So good that another quarterback prospect said to him, what's it feel like to run 4-4? Everybody wants to be that fast. Now Herbert to start the drive. And he sneaks his way forward only for a couple here. Second down. <laughs> I know we can't hear what's going on in that huddle right now, but I'll guarantee you at least one offensive lineman is saying, my bad, we simply couldn't move him off the line of scrimmage. We've got to do a better job trying to root those guys out of there. Here's a second and eight. On the option right is Fields. And maybe the wrong read there as he's going to go down immediately. A yard in the wrong direction makes third down tougher. Third down and nine. And not a lot of success to be found there. Oh, you got that right, partner, because if you're trying to make guys miss about 10 yards or so downfield, that's a pretty good play. But if you've got to do it in your own backfield, I consider that a problem. That doesn't work too well. Throwing on third down, Fields. That's complete to his running back, Herbert. And they will rally and stop him short of the first down. They get him to the ground at the 26. 3 nothing after one on EA Sports. Back in Chicago, ready for the second quarter. It's the Bears in possession. As they've got it with a fourth down coming up. On is the punt team now as this one's sent away. This is taken at about the 14. And when it's said and done, it's a 58-yard punt. And the Niners will go on offense first and 10. Back out there comes the 49ers offense ready for their second drive. Last time out, you remember their drive stalled, but thanks to their kicker, booted a long field goal to at least get him three. Now here they'll try to do better and find the end zone. And in our experience, how much fun is it for coaches to know that they've got a kicker who can nail it from long distance? Now, the hard part is, as an offensive play caller, you don't want that in your head too much where you're relying on it, and he goes out and gets the job done for them. But I'm quite sure he would be content to just kick extra points from here on out. Yeah, absolutely no question. I think his teammates would be okay with him just kicking the extra points as well. It's now second and six. Now a second and six. Purdy bootlegging it. And it's incomplete. Just nowhere to go with the football. He was forced to put that one into Lake Michigan. I think his receivers have to do a better job of working free because he didn't have anywhere to go at all on that play. So after the second down incompletion, they'll come up now against a third and six. Purdy will set up to throw it here. And he'll go down. The Bears get there for the sack. The safety blitz turns out to be a great call defensively as they sack him for a loss of nine. How about that? One of the so-called little guys putting the pressure on. That was a strong safety. 
When I was in college, we often called that a lightning blitz. On fourth down, the Niners trot out Mitch Wisnowski to bunt the football. Back deep, Trent Taylor. Fifty-one yards on the punt there, and the Bears take over. Chicago works their way back onto the field here for their second drive of the game. As we eat closer and closer to intermission, Charles, remember last time out they punted. They would love to get points here, especially if this is going to be their final possession of the first half. Yeah, and this is what close games feel like because the pressure is on both sides, but sometimes the pressure is a little bit higher on the team with a slight edge because they're trying to hold on to that, trying to increase it. Let's see how this one continues. Two yards the gain on the keeper, and it's second down. Anytime you decide to use your quarterback as a runner, most of the time when you design a play, you're expected to break a little bit bigger than this one because when you run him on short gains, your risk-reward and him taking hits, I'm not sure that's the payoff they were looking for. From the 31, here's a second and eight. Field's going to keep it once more. And he'll be limited to a short gain up to about the 34-yard line. They'll wind up getting three on the keeper there, but it leads to a third down. Typically on the read option play, when we talk about responsibilities, we're talking about what the quarterback has to go through. How about the inside linebacker, though? His job on this play, shadow the quarterback and hold him to a short gain. Did it to perfection. Third and five. to throw his fields. And there's a short throw, it's caught by Komet. And he will have the Bears first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. Well, a lot of times when you get a manageable third down situation like this, you have to think about your tight end, and he comes through for him, picking up the first down. First down now, but that clock rolling. Now it's Fields. Looking deep here for Mooney. This is caught inside the 15. A huge play there for Chicago. 48 yards for an offense that has not found the end zone yet. That's a big play. There's the spark right there. The big play that they needed. Now they've got to go ahead and finish this drive and put this ball in the end zone. The chain gang hustling to catch up. Here's first and goal from just inside the 10. Fields. Touchdown! Cole Komet from eight yards out. And the Bears will take the lead here in the final minute of the first half. He was on point throwing the ball right there. He had the big play to get him down close, and then he delivers a touchdown pass on first and goal. And you mentioned the big play that got him down close. I think that big play left him reeling a little bit. They didn't recover from it. And you know they always talk about having to have a short memory on defense after a big play against you? Looks like their memory was a little too long there. Santos able to tack on the extra point, and that makes it a 7-3 lead. taken in right around the goal line and able to get this out to the 25. Well, the Niners going back on offense now late in this first half. And with them trailing, there is still enough time to try to string a few plays together, maybe get in the field goal range. to throw it on first down. He'll get this complete to Charlie Werner. 
The 49ers now going to use the first of their timeouts as they stop it here with just under 40 ticks to go in this first half. Here's a second and two now from the 33. Purdy looking to throw. Throws the out route and completes it to Samuel. And he'll go out near midfield at the 49. It'll go as a first down for San Francisco on a pickup of 16. Well, that's what you're looking for when you want to throw the ball downfield. You want one of those guys who can play out on the perimeter, can play out wide, who can not only get open, but when they're covered, can uncover themselves downfield and create catches. Here's Purdy on first and 10. Nowhere to go here. He lost the football. And this ball recovered by the offense. But remember, they cannot advance it here in the final two minutes of the half. So this will be blown dead, and it'll come back to the spot of the fumble. After the sack, oh, they're staring at a challenge basically from the other side of town. It's second at a country mile. Out of the gun, Purdy. Throw left side, McCaffrey's got it. And he'll get it down to the 47 here. And now the Niners going to signal for their third and final timeout as it comes with 22 seconds to go here in half number one. The Bears bring out an extra defender in the secondary now for third down. Back to throw, Purdy. Complete. So 17 seconds now on the clock here. The frustration evident there because he couldn't find anyone on third down, and he left no doubt that he was throwing that one away. So on fourth down, here's the Australian native Mitch Wisnowski to punt this one away. No returning this one. It sails out of bounds, and they'll spot it right at the 20. The Bears offense ready to go for their next drive. And with a 7-3 lead, we'll see how aggressive they want to be. A run on first down, but it's not going to get them much. Maybe a yard, and that's all. So we come upon halftime here at Soldier Field with the Bears out in front. As we'll send you down to Orlando, we check in with Jonathan Coachman for our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach. All right, Brandon, back to you, too, in just a bit. But first, welcome everyone to downtown Orlando and our EA Sports Halftime Report. We got an excellent first half from the dynamic quarterback, Justin Fields. He has a touchdown pass, and that amounted to the only touchdown of the game for either team thus far. Set to resume. Here we go with the second half. The Bears holding the lead and ready to receive the kick. And not much happening on the return as he'll get this to about the 23. So here's the Bears offense now as they get set to start this third quarter. Man, I just love being in this stadium. So much history, tradition, so many great teams and games, and 
And we're seeing a pretty good one right now. Hotly contested in the third quarter. And a short gain there as he'll get it up only to about the 24. Just a yard on the pickup there, and it'll bring up a second and nine. Well, it's hard to have vision as a runner and find a hole when there's nothing but defenders in your way. They stacked that one up really well. But give him credit. Instead of trying to bounce it out and turn it into a big play, which might have turned into a big loss, Kai just took his medicine there and took the one yard. Field throw there, complete to Mooney. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. Just his second catch of the game so far. This one moves the chains. Well, this is where reading defenses and practice time comes into play. Got to know what you're running versus zone versus man and how to run the proper route. And they just executed that one pretty well. On first and ten, it's Herbert. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. Ten more there and another first down. For a lot of guys playing this game, there's no better feeling than running right through a tackle. He's able to lower center of gravity and churn his legs for a really nice pickup. So from inside Niner territory now, this is first and ten at the 47. Field's going to keep it running right. As he's got this down inside the 40 to the 39. He'll pick up seven there on the first down keeper. A little do-it-yourself run right there and a nice game. And I like that he knew that that was about all he was going to get. So he did a nice job of protecting himself, took care of the football, took what the defense gave it. If they continue to allow him to do that, they'll find their way taking what they can all the way to the end zone. Mooney, the motion man right. On second down, a run with Herbert. Oh, that one well designed as he'll take this down to the 30-yard line. It's a pickup of 10 and a Bears first down. They've got the lead early here in the third quarter and runs like that are how they established that lead in the first half. I love the fact that you're using the word lead because they are leading from the front, pounding on the defense right now with the running game and truly establishing themselves here in the second half. On first and ten, here's Fields. And he's going to go down here and sack. They push him back to the 34. No surprise there. Chase Young wrecks that play with a sack. Impressive individual effort there. No one was going to stop him around the edge. Yeah, no doubt about it. And that's why if you play in a 4-3 base and you're a defensive end, that's why you get the big bucks. They count on you to do everything. Defend the run and, of course, get to the quarterback. And he's able to get it to the edge of the red zone at the 20-yard line. Well, Barton, for a few years there, we thought this read option play was going to take over the whole NFL. It seemed like everyone was using it. But it has been scaled back considerably in the last few seasons, mainly because people are worried about their quarterbacks getting hit. But when you call it at the right time and you use it properly, you see the type of gains you can get. A nice chunk of yardage there by the quarterback. And they'll try and run the option to pick it up. And able to get him down, but he does reach the five. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. It'll be first and goal when we come back. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. Back now at Soldier Field. It's Bears football here. They also have the lead as well as we begin quarter number four. They'll run here with Herbert. And he is in. Touchdown, Chicago. Khalil Herbert, a five-yard touchdown run. And the Bears are able to build on to their fourth quarter lead. And that right there is the definition of a statement drive. Here in the fourth quarter, trying to get to the finish line. And here, they were able to hold the ball for a long time and move it down the field. And how about them finishing it off with the touchdown run? Winning football 101, check that box. Santos with the extra point, and that pushes the lead up to 11.
touchdown. Here's the punter, Trenton Gill, to kick it away. And they'll start this drive just across the 30. Pretty nice work on the return. San Francisco set to go on offense once more. And the script really is flipped for them. The momentum on the other sideline, and now they have to try and battle back from a two-score deficit. Purdy going to lead the 49ers to the line, first and 10 at the 31-yard line. They'll try and start this drive in the air. Trying for Ayuk, but it's intercepted. Tyreek Stevenson picks it off. And they are going to set up shop at the 32-yard line. So a big chunk of yardage will be marked off there for that P.I. call. And now you know why receivers and the guys throwing the ball, they like to collaborate and just heave it up sometimes because you can get these types of calls that go against the defense. Pass interference, and they gain over 30 yards of real estate on that one. Now on first down, it's Purdy. This is Jennings. And they bring him to the ground just shy of midfield. The Niners have the first down on a gain of 11. Well, every drive from here out is definitely crucial and critical. They know that they need to get at least three here to get it back to a one-score game. But I can't imagine that in their huddle that they're thinking at all about getting a field goal. They want to get into the end zone and then try and get the ball back again. The throw over the middle taken in. And he is tackled inside the 40, not quite to the 35. This duo locked in 14 yards there and a first down. All right, this is the time of the game where they're down a couple of scores. And they've really got to get some yards in chunks. And they know the defense doesn't want to give those up, but they've got to find a way to take them anyway. Now the question is, can they string a few of those together? Now here's a pass on first down that's knocked away and incomplete. And not a common sight, at least on this drive. A momentary setback, though, for this passing game that has been moving well this series. Good thing for them, though. Still two more downs to connect and try and pick up another first down. Now a second and ten. Purdy sets up to throw again. And that's complete to McCaffrey. A nice move he had, but can't break away. And he's brought down just inside the 30. That'll leave him with a third and two coming up. They got eight yards there. Looking to speed things up here, going with some tempo. On third down, it's Purdy. He's got his target. That's complete. And they'll have it in the red zone before he crosses over out of bounds. Clock management, definitely critical here if they want to get back in this game. Absolutely agreed. They have to up the tempo in this case, down a couple of scores, want to make sure they have a chance to win this ball game. All three timeouts plus the two-minute warning. Here's first and ten. Here's Purdy. His throw caught right around the six. Touchdown, 49ers. Christian McCaffrey from 17 yards out. And the 49ers have made it a one-score game again here in the fourth. So how about that for an answer? They get the touchdown there, and it's back to a one-score game here in the fourth. And that's what these guys have done all game long because they've scratched and slashed their way to stay in this game. And by now, we should all realize they're not going away. Well. Now the pressure again swings to their defense because they're going to need to find some way to get the ball back. So following the touchdown, here's Moody back out to send it away. 
And the drive will begin at the 25 as Scott is going to stay in the end zone. The Chicago offense set to get started. After the touchdown we just saw, we have a brand new ball game. And now look at the situation. You've got plenty of time on the clock. Defensively, they have three timeouts. So do you run the football here or do you throw it? I think you have that full conversation with your offensive unit. And you tell them, here's the situation. They've got all of their timeouts. So we are not going to play this conservatively. We've got to attack them. We've got to make them use those, gain the ground that we need in order to put this game away. If you think we're just going to run it three times and punt it, you got another thing coming. Yeah, but not a lot for the two-minute warning in play, so essentially four timeouts left. They have to be aggressive here. Three points separating these two sides with two minutes left to go in the fourth. So the Bears with the football here as we welcome you back. We couldn't ask for much more to this point in the second half. A gorgeous day. One score game. First and ten here. And now we'll see a timeout used on defense as they stop it right out of the break with 1.57 to go in the ball game. at the 40 here for second and five. He's going to get it again. Just looking to get forward and protect the ball. Now San Francisco going to call their second timeout. That'll leave them with just one remaining in this fourth quarter of play. Here is third down and four. Read option. Here's Herbert. That is brought down short. Two yards there. Needed four. And now the Niners going to single for their third and final timeout as they'll head to the sideline and talk over what to do next. Here comes the Bears punter now as he'll punt it away for the second time. And that one hits a little too close to the goal line and it continues into the end zone for a touchback. So Purdy and the Niners down 14-11. Just over a minute 40 to play. They need, at minimum, three points out of this as they come up first and ten. <laughs> to throw is Purdy. Got a man, that's Ayuk. And he stopped right at the 25 after a gain of five. Not in a position where they absolutely have to rush right now, but they definitely have to pick up the tempo a bit. Here comes second down at five. Here's Purdy. Finding Samuel. And he gets this up to the 34 out of bounds there. Well, they got the yardage they needed there, picked up the first down, got out of bounds. How about the urgency that they have, as well as the understand where they are on the field? Well, plenty of time to work with here, but the timeouts, they're gone. Here's first and ten. That's caught by Jennings. And they're going to have this across midfield and inside the 45. That's a nice job right there, partner, because they were able to work down the middle of the field, working in the seams, because I think defensively, they were guarding the sidelines, trying to keep them from getting out of bounds. They took what they gave them, and it was successful. Here's first down. Purdy to throw. They'll find Ayuk open right side. And brought down, but able to get it to their 30-yard line. Partner, you got to like what they're doing right there. Little by little, they're getting closer. Another good pickup. Yeah. 
This is first and ten. Purdy to throw. This pass to Jennings, and he makes a catch. Pick up the three brings up second and seven at the 27-yard line. Well, Charles, uh, I know you have a lot of questions, so do I, about the decision there at the end. It had the potential game-time field goal. Yes, it would have been a long field goal, but they passed it up, and they lose the game. And you're right, partner. We all have questions, but I don't think anyone's going to ask the question more forcefully than the person who signs the checks for the entire organization. Why didn't you run the field goal kicker out there? You had a chance to tie the game. Looked like a makeable kick. Was the kicker hurt? Did you just not like the field conditions? 